HR issues can kill you. One complaint against your company can turn your world upside down. And you spend way too much time dealing with HR when you should be spending your time on making a profit. You should talk to Bambi. With Bambi, get access to your own dedicated U.S.-based HR manager starting at just $99 per month. They get to know you and your business while providing HR expertise and the personal touch you need and want. They're available by phone, email, and real-time chat, so onboarding and terminations run smoothly. Team members reach peak performance, and your business stays compliant with changing HR regulations. And with Bambi's HR Autopilot, you'll automate important HR practices like setting policies, training, and feedback. HR managers can easily cost 80 grand a year, but Bambi starts at $99 per month. Schedule your free conversation today to see how much Bambi can take off your plate. Go to Bambi.com right now and type in Accelerate under podcast when you sign up. It'll really help the show. Spelled BAM, B-E-E dot com. Bambi.com. Type in Accelerate. Me, 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 but also you. <laughs> the Pharaoh fast forwards his favorite foreign film. Powder donut. <clears throat> Okay, what's my line? Uh, the only line I see here on the script is get options based on your budget with the Name Your Price tool from Progressive. Oh man, that's a tongue twister, huh? I'm sorry, I'm gonna need a few more minutes. <clears throat> bulbous Walrus, the Bulbous Walrus. The Name Your Price tool, only from Progressive. The owl ran afoul of the comatose Coxswain. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates. Price and coverage match limited by state law. Welcome to Accelerate Your Business Growth with your host, Diane Helbig. Diane is a leading small business development and leadership coach, author, and speaker who is passionate about sharing valuable ideas, tips, and techniques with business professionals worldwide. Diane brings you the world's experts and gurus in all things business, whether it's sales, structure, social media, planning, or plateauing, guests bring their expertise and energy to each episode. When growing your business is your focus, Accelerate Your Business Growth is the show to listen to. Got a topic or guest suggestion? Let Diane know. The goal is to make sure you have the information you need to move your business forward. Thanks for joining us. Settle in and enjoy. Hi, everybody. Thank you so much for joining me. Today's podcast is sponsored by Audible.com. Audible.com is a leading provider of spoken audio entertainment and information. Listen to audiobooks whenever and wherever you want. Get a free book when you sign up for a 30-day free trial at audibletrial.com slash business growth. Accelerate Your Business Growth podcast continues to enjoy inclusion on lists of the best podcasts to listen to. And That is um, something we are tremendously proud of. We continue to gain recognition as a great resource for small business owners, entrepreneurs, sales professionals, and really business leaders in general. This is really because of the guests uh, who join me. These are folks who have expertise in a variety of um, business areas, and they give their time and their knowledge to uh, have a conversation with me so that all of you can get the information you need and are looking for so you can do better things in your business. Today, my guest is Mike Mooney. It would be easy to say that Mike's career has been going in circles for the last 25 years in the motorsports industry. Mike has built a reputation for creating brand, athlete, and sports property distinction by launching and leading award-winning marketing and communications campaigns. Mike has represented many highly regarded brands such as Mercedes-Benz, 3M, Tylenol, Walmart, Eli Lilly, and Fifth Third Bank. He's also recognized for his work in crisis and reputation management, having led dozens of crisis recovery efforts over his career. Mike now uses his extensive public relations reputation management, and leadership experiences 
as a speaker to educate, train, and coach leaders, entrepreneurs, and business owners to proactively shift the way they value, manage, and build their brands and reputation. His book, Reputation Shift, Five High-Performance Truths for Success, delivers practical and ready-to-use personal branding and reputation-building strategies for people who want to ensure personal and professional success. Thanks so much for joining me today, Mike. Hey, Diane, thank you. I'm so excited to be here with you. I am thrilled to have you here. Uh, we're, you know, we're going to be talking today about mainly about reputation management, and it, it is a critically important topic that I am not sure enough people pay attention to until like maybe they're in some sort of a crisis. Right. Um, so I, I do, I, my first question is actually, I'm curious about why you decided to write a book about reputation management. Mm -hmm. uh, as opposed to uh, <laughs> children. <laughs> race cars. <laughs> right? well, which is great, having the racing guy on, on your show with Accelerating Business, right? I, I, love, I love the tie in that. Um, yeah, so, so to your question, Diane, you know, why did I write it? Well, you know, after 25 years of doing this type of work uh, for some, some great brands and, and uh, athletes, and mainly having to come in after the fact, and yeah. that work is, was always after the damage was done. Um, you know, I, I've been a student of this for years, and I'd always like to dissect not only the crisis situations that I was involved in, but, but others that you see or read about in, in the papers and uh, the headlines. And there always seemed to be a point in time, Diane, where you know, somebody could have done something differently, whether it was a different choice, whether it was uh, realigning with their values, whatever it might have been, but, but we could have been proactive. And that was the whole purpose. You know, I, I started looking at how could we be more proactive? And then quite honestly, it revolves around the question of how much is your reputation worth? Because gosh, we yeah. pay a good price for it after the damage is done. Okay, so, so that's a good point. So how would you say reputations are typically being handled it today in today's market? Yeah, today, you know, we see a lot of SEO, search engine optimization. Yeah, right? yeah. That's where people typically go when, you're, when they're focusing on, we can help you manage your reputation. Um, uh, it's a great strategy. Don't get me wrong. It's a great strategy, but it, it's a... Quite honestly, in my opinion, it, it's like trying to bury the cat turd further down in the litter box, right? <laughs> you're, you're trying to get the news off of page one on the Google search, right? Because we know 90% of people won't go to page two. But right. it, it really is just a, it's a digital strategy trying to handle an analog problem. And guess what? You know, we're the analog problem. It's the people. So, you know, I, that's where we see this, the focus, but really where I'm coming from and, and the, my, miss, my mission and message is really around as people, right? As leaders, yeah. what are we doing to address the issue at hand? Because if, if you don't and you keep relying on SEO, it's going to be like the game of whack-a-mole, right? It's just going to keep popping up and you're going to keep dealing with it. So that sounds to me like real, what you're saying is people are addressing a symptom, but not the disease. Yeah, yeah, so wow. well, so well put. So and and that's, that, that's the challenge, right, is, is that um, there, in my opinion on this, Diane, and from what I've seen over the years, is that there's a fundamental shift in empowerment between asking the question, what if, right? What if is all about being proactive? What if it's about looking at where are the areas of risk within my business, my team, my product, my industry, and how do I approach that in a way that I could actually design, plan, and create protection and distinction versus the what now. What now is, look, fire's already started, and for business owners, that means put everything on hold, pull people off the jobs at hand, because we've got to put this fire out. And guess what? Besides your reputation losing, so does your business. Well, because it's so much more expensive to fix something than it is to, to prepare for it ahead of time. Right, right. Ugh, but the, yeah. challenge is, the challenge is, and this isn't making light of the priorities and, and you know, where 
uh, business owners are, and it doesn't matter if you're, a, if you're a, uh, running a Fortune 50 company or you're a small business owner, uh, the focus and priority is generally around how do I get the product to market in a way that's efficient, that's going to you know, allow me to keep my margins in place, keep people employed and deliver the service uh, that, that I promised. Um, where, does, where does reputation fit into the sales and the business building strategy? Right. It's not. Oh, I see. You know, I, I was listening to a CEO um, probably about a month and a half ago. It was interesting. He had this conversation about building team and building reputation uh, and for, for his organization. And he said, you know, I, I believe it's important, but what keeps me up at three in the morning is I've got a choice. I can either make my company better, strengthen its reputation, or make next quarter. Uh -huh. And I have to imagine that's where a lot of business owners are today, but you, they aren't mutually exclusive. We can do the same. And in fact, the research will show that if you do build your reputation, if you do build out on that brand, I guess what? You are going to grow your business. You will make next quarter and the quarter after that and the quarter after that. So, um, I'm, I'm listening to that and I'm thinking it, it, it's about prioritizing and, and maybe juggling more than one thing at the same time because it feels to me like this whole reputation management thing actually happens in concert with the other, you know, getting the product out on time and that it's, right. that it's not an either or. Mm -hmm. And so leaders need to figure out how to give it energy at the same time they're giving other things energy. Well, they do. Absolutely. And, and, and I believe that, you know, uh, when you talk to a lot of business owners today, uh, you can ask them, so where's the foundation, right? Where, where, where is your, what's your business centered around? And generally speaking, it's not going to be around, you know, solely the product. You've got your product or service offering, but generally around that are your values, right? What does your company stand for? Because quite honestly, you know, you, you, so many things have been commoditized these days. It really is about the company's individuals, right? The leadership. Yeah, yeah. When they say 50% of a company's value is tied to its CEO's reputation, that says a lot. And we see that in publicly traded companies too. When the new C-level executive comes in, you see their stock going up or down based on their reputation. So right. I, I, would, I would actually put forth the thought that yes, um, reputation management um, can work and should work in concert with your general business practice, but it should be centered right around with your values. And that's where I come from and with my, my message in this, Diane, is around it's values based. Um, in, in my book, I, uh, I was never really a math person. I'm a communication <laughs> and marketing guy, right? So um, somewhat ironic that I, I kind of built out this little equation in the book, but it's really simple around reputation, is that your values drive your decisions. Your decisions then drive your behavior. Your consistent behavior over time is what becomes your reputation. So values plus decisions plus behavior over time equals reputation. So the idea is get back to the values. Don't deviate. Yeah. Don't deviate. And therefore, it doesn't become extra work. It's just living into and doing what it is that, that you believe in, that makes you unique and different and strong and, and makes you who you are. That's really great. I, I totally get that. That makes so much sense to me. And, and it becomes uh, a, an easier, streamlined thing to do because you're staying with the main focus of your company. Like I always say to people, before you make a decision, before words come out of your mouth, ask yourself the question, is this serving my business? Is this right. serving the goal, right? And if the answer is no, don't do it. Right. Exactly right. Exactly yeah. right. And, and, and that's, that's the, the idea that we're not trying to create more work. Oh my gosh, I've got, now I've got to build out a whole reputation plan. Well, no, you, you've just got to make sure that you're living into the values consistently. Right. And more importantly, beyond yourself, how about the people who work with you, who are on your team? 
here's, you know, when I started out that this, this was like 12 years ago when the seed was sort of planted and I was thinking about, you know, writing a book and, and developing this, this program, but it was really at a time when, this was in 2006, uh, Facebook was six months old. There was no Twitter. Um, you know, everything was on message boards and forums. And I realized that for organizations and brands, that the landscape was radically shifting because of technology. Uh, more for the company, it was no longer a, uh, a monologue of just talking at consumers. Now they're talking to each other in an amplified way. But as social media has really begun to, you know, penetrate and, and you know, become part of our everyday lives, the reality is that no, we are those brands and that the reputation of the business is really built upon the reputation of the people who work there day in and day out. So I, I'd also, you know, I, I bring it up because it's, it's so important for leaders and business owners to recognize that it's not just what they're doing, it's ensuring that the people on their teams are also living into the values and strengthening uh, and protecting the reputation of the organization. Yeah, boy, I'm so glad that you said that. I think that is so important, and and it gets back to making sure that they know what the values are of the organization, right? That they, and that that's a constant. That they, and, and that everyone in the leadership is living those values. Because sometimes, that you know, a company will come up with a mission and a values proposition or whatever, but then the way that they act towards their employees or toward their vendors or whoever doesn't quite map. And so then the people who work with them aren't, they're getting mixed messages. They, they don't really know what, where they're supposed to be. And so they end up behaving in a way that is not necessarily um, in keeping with the stated values. Right, right. And, and you, know, you know what's even worse that comes out of that, Diane? Is then, have you ever had this happen? I, I know I have, where somebody would say, hey, would you work with that agency or what do you think of the, the group? They're, well, you know, I, I would say, well, I've had a bad experience. I might say, well, the organization is good, but man, I'll tell you, you know, that guy, Mike, uh, <laughs> not someone that I'd want to work with. Yeah. So, the, so there's also then this halo effect that, that really um, people need to be more mindful of that. You know, especially the owners seeing that the, the people on the front lines are really the stewards of the reputation. You know, um, it's, I, I love that you brought up the, the living the values part of this, um, because I, I really believe that and we see this a lot in, in the corporate world where people have those great little cards that go on the end of their little, um, you know, RFID chips that get them from room to room and it sits on their their belt loop, you know, and, and mm -hmm. has values on there. But that's usually as far as it goes in many cases. Like you said, there's a disconnect <laughs> sometimes, you know. And I often ask business owners to say, you know, have you taken the time to look at your values here on the wall and then ask your employees to, to literally sit down and write out and map out where those values connect with their day-to-day -day roles and responsibilities. How is uh. the opportunity to live it out? Because I think that's the connection point that we often miss. It looks great on the wall, looks great on the website or our social media channels, but I just don't get how it really connects to me and my everyday role and responsibility. And, and, and then it doesn't, if, if that is not apparent, chances are, it is not happening with the clients and the customers Absolutely. either. Absolutely. And they know it. Yes. And, and to think that they don't is really dangerous because, oh. Oh, yeah. right, the employees and the customers see everything and they see where there's that disconnect and, and where, you know, the, you're saying one thing, but you're doing something else. And, yeah. and, and it, so I would imagine that that, is a, it, and I'll ask you the question, is that a difficult uh, reputation crisis or negative reputation? Uh, is it difficult to get past that, to, to fix it? Well, it's a, yes and no, or yes and yes. <laughs> it depends on how, <laughs> how it's approached, quite honestly. Uh, 
you know, where, where I see, where most people see the challenges in, the, in this, Diane, I, I look at opportunity. And I really think that perspective is, is paramount when it comes to um, A, being proactive and B, managing reputation. So if you're in a situation where you're a business owner and it comes to light that one of your employees is, has done something in a way that one of your clients will, is either leaving, uh, expressing concern, uh, distrust, whatever it is, there is a huge opportunity there if yeah. handled properly and immediately, right? That there is zero substitute for speed in those situations because what we tend to do is we leave it off to the side and hope that it takes care of itself. Well, right. nothing, nothing grows in a vacuum other than speculation and rumor and distrust. Yeah. So as the owner, this is where you have to take that deep breath and say, okay, let's sit down and assess what happened. Now, what are the steps that we're going to take to remedy that? You know, was somebody living outside of the values and we'll address it internally? Was it something where there was a miscommunication with the client? Well, then let's have that conversation openly. Bring them in face to face. Let's talk about this. Uh, but you can't let that go more than three or four days. That's so interesting. Uh, and I'm so glad that you brought it up. As you were talking about it, I was thinking about an experience I had with an organization I was involved with where they, they made a decision. Um, so it's a membership organization. So, mm -hmm. uh, you know, supposedly it's all about the members. Right. Well, they made a decision that they were going to change a, a process and they were not going to use um, some members for a project that they had repeatedly in the past, which is fine. Mm -hmm. I mean, that, that was not a big deal. Right. However, they made the decision consciously to not reach out to those people to explain what was happening mm -hmm. and the reasons why. Yeah. They decided they were going to wait and and see and just deal with it if and when those <laughs> members reached out to them to ask oh, what was going on. Oh man, oh yeah, yeah. How'd that work yeah. out? No, not so well. <laughs> <laughs> well, I I am shocked and amazed. Let me pick myself up off the floor, Diane. I can't believe it. <laughs> can't believe it. Yeah, and 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 we tried to tell them this is not a very good idea, but they're past i mean this is it's so interesting that we're talking about this because th their belief was that they would only have to deal with the people who really questioned it they didn't realize that the whole bunch of people weren't going to ask them the question but were going to be annoyed and and pissed off and that, that supposedly their values were you know working f for the members and they didn't realize that this wasn't taking them there that this was the exact opposite of that right right well, and this I'm, goes on every day. Oh, it does. It does. And, and, and here, here's the reality. I mean, we see it in, in the headlines every day. And, and that's why I try to really make the point where, you know, we are, we are living in this perfect storm right now, Diane, where we have and we're seeing sort of the good news and bad news in the work that I do, right, is that we're seeing every day in the headlines that this gap in, in values and leadership. Yeah, that, that that's living out in real time for us at the highest levels. And we're not just talking about people who are um, losing their jobs, but we're talking about the legacy. We're talking about their families. We're talking about even the companies for which they work going under. And now people who had nothing to do with it are losing their jobs, right? So we've got this, right. this, this gap in leadership and values. And then you've got this world of the citizen journalist where we all have cameras and recording devices on us all the time. I mean, at no other time have reputations been as fragile as they are today. You know, and, and the irony is this. So you, you think about the example you just gave, and I call this the search and destroy uh, model where I ask, you know, where do people go to search and find information on people today or organizations? Yeah, the internet. The internet, right? All over the internet. Yeah. Where do you think they go when they're ticked off and frustrated and had a bad experience? <laughs> it's the same place. Yeah. And you don't think somebody is going to at some point write something about that or, or vent or, you know, I, that, so that point is if we're seeing it at the highest levels of business, we know it's happening. And right. 
we just know it is. But the, but the challenge is, you know, having these owners and leaders take the time to slow down, take a breath, be present, and really think through how do I need to address this? Now, like I said earlier, if it's aligned with their values, then certainly you can, you can address it, but, but you have to get on it fast. There is just, there's just no time because then these stories start picking up a life of their own. And by that point, now, now you're chasing the message, you're chasing the story, you're on your heels, you can no longer be proactive and demonstrate true, true concern and more importantly, right. a plan of how you're going to make this better. Yeah, boy, I mean, you're just telegraphing that the reason you're addressing it is because you got caught, not yeah. because yeah. you really, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, you know, mm -hmm. and, and here's the thing. If you think about statistically in business these days, how difficult, how much time, effort, energy, and resources put into business development, right? And there's yeah. a lot of it's easier to keep a client than find one. Well, 65% of all new business comes through referrals. Well, Referrals yeah. are what 100% based on your reputation, plain and simple. Right. Plain and simple. You want to drive more business, drive your reputation. Simple. Yeah, boy. That uh, that is it's so funny, isn't it? That that we spend all of our time and energy in in the this one place because that's what, you know, keeps us viable and we don't connect the dots to all the things that impact that. Right. It, and that make it easier or harder to achieve. And make it hard on ourselves, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah, but again, you know, look, this isn't like a, a, an accusation by any, any stretch, Diane, because I, I was listening on one of your uh, earlier podcasts where mm -hmm. one of your guests talked about, hey, you know, in business planning uh, is the difference between running your business and planning and building the business, right? And it doesn't make people right or wrong. It's just where their focus is. So it's no different with this conversation around reputation and their brand. Um, you know, owners are looking at the bottom line. They're trying to make their numbers. That's, that's yeah. totally fine. But that can't be the sole focus of how you're building your business. It, it's just, you know, as you look even down the line of your employees, you know, I, I read a, a statistic a little while back that basically said that 85% of employees would leave their current job if offered a job by a company with a better reputation. So I'd ask wow. you, like, close your eyes for a second and imagine 85% of your workforce walking out the door tomorrow because of yeah. something that you could have proactively fixed on your own and kept them there. Wow, that is stunning. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, oh. It, yeah, I, people might think reputation is a soft skill. It's a nice to have. I, I would really argue in today's world and this, what I'll call the reputation economy, that no, it's a mandatory. It's an absolute mandatory. I agree. I, I, I am completely with you on that. And, and interesting, it's so interesting that I think one of the things that I am hearing you say that I'm hoping other people are hearing you say is that reputation has to be part of your strategy. It has to be part of your business development, uh, you know, energy and focus. It has right. to be part of every aspect of your business because it so directly impacts every aspect of your success or failure. Without a doubt. I'll throw one more uh, stat at you, Diane, that, that again, would really open my eyes on this. It was a study done uh, I think about a year ago, so still very relevant uh, in terms of, uh, of business, but basically it was saying that 87% of executives um, rate reputational risk as one of the most important strategic risks to their business. 87%, yet how many do you think actually did anything about it? <laughs> I don't know. 15%. 15%. So, you know, that to me, demonstrates a couple of things. One, they recognize the importance and priority. Uh, that also recognizes, though, that if only 15% of, of executives actually acting on it, uh, one, it's a question of, well, where do I start and how do I do it? Right. And then there's the more uncomfortable question of, oh, man, look what I found. What do I do now? Right. Right? I've got enough going on right now that, that I have to worry about this yeah. now. Right. 
But I, again, I'd offer a flip on that and say, how could a business owner take this as an opportunity to create distinct distinction and more importantly, build protection around the business? Yeah. Look, in yeah. 25 years of, of, of doing this type of work in motorsports, uh, where things happen quickly, and we're not just talking about like business bankruptcy or, or you know, poor sponsorship programs. I'm talking having dealt with driver deaths, uh, fan fatalities, where things are happening in, in, in real time, where you know, it's never a question of if, it's really only a matter of when. So the really, right. really only ask are, you know, am I prepared? And what's my reputation worth? Okay, I, I want to take a quick sponsor break. Wait, I have to write myself <laughs> a note. Um, uh, because I have so many questions for you. So. <laughs> That's awesome. We'll, 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 we'll jump onto them on the other side of the uh, sponsor break. That's great. <laughs> awesome. Thank you. Accelerate Your Business Growth Podcast is happy to be sponsored by Audible.com. Audible.com is a leading provider of spoken digital audio entertainment and information. They have over 150,000 titles to choose from, and you can listen to them on any device, including whatever you're hearing us on right now. And if you sign up at our link, which is audibletrial.com slash business growth, you get one free audiobook and a one-month trial of the service. Some examples of books you can listen to on audible.com are Reputation Shift by our guest, Mike, and The Irresistible Consultant's Guide to Winning Clients by David A. Fields. So visit audibletrial.com slash business growth, explore the books that are of interest to you, and receive one free audiobook when you sign up for the trial. Today, we're speaking with Mike Mooney about reputation management. And Mike, before uh, we went on the sponsor break, you were talking about uh, being proactive, and it's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when. And a thought that was going through my head was that there, that there are two different kinds of proactive. There's being proactive with preparing what you will do in the event of a crisis. Right. And then there's proactive, which is making sure that everything is aligning every, you know, every decision and everything you're doing internally is aligning with your values. I love that. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. So how does, a company or the leaders of a company make sure that I don't know really how to ask this question, but like that, that the that they have values that are um, I want to say authentic and genuine. That they're not just saying, "Oh, this sounds good." Right. But but that these are really their values and they are good core solid values that they can build from. Right. Now, actually, that, that that's a that's a great question to ask, and and, and it's it's a lot to sort of unpack in that uh, mm -hmm. because the word authenticity is what jumped out at me there. A lot of times you see people go on on Google mission statements, and they'll go on and find a good one and <laughs> insert their company name, you know, uh, into, into Google or Apple's or, you know, some other, some other companies, because it, it sounds really good. Um, you know, when I'm working with business owners and, and leaders, and we talk about values, it really is one of those conversations that it's like, okay, let's sit down and get into this and roll the, the, the sleeves up, because we've got to get into a place that is authentically you. Yeah. Okay, and especially if you're the owner of the organization, right? It, it really is about you, then the product and the business, because you, you, you created this. This is your right. vision, right? So it's really about, is it authentic in your space, right? And then, will those values deliver value, <laughs> you know, to, <laughs> to your employees and your customers? That's always sort of been like my, my, my kind of key backs to that question of, of having authentic values. Will they deliver value? Will they make life better, easier? Uh, will people be inspired um, because of the values that, that we have and we're living out? Whether they're people who work on my team or they're the customers who are investing their dollars in my product. So that would be That's the first a great litmus test. Yeah. 
you know, because it, what it does is it really starts sparking conversation and you start looking at your values maybe in some different ways. And I'm not saying that you look at your values in a transactional manner, but it really is relational. It really is about, you know, what are we doing um, to, to live into what we truly believe is authentically us. And in that conversation, you may find that there's some other value you hadn't even really thought about because you're thinking huh. about the true connection of how it's being lived out. So that would be one, one area that I would, I would say would be important. And then the other is what we discussed earlier, quite honestly, is then taking your team with those values and saying, how do I apply that to all the aspects of my day-to-day -day job, my interactions with my colleagues, um, with my customers, with my vendors, right? Where, and, and literally this isn't like a, think about it. I'm saying like seriously sit down and write look through your day, look through those activities. Where am I living these out? Where do I have the opportunity to live this out? Yeah, so. So I, I just think, I that, think that, 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 connects, that, that kind of connects the dots in my mind. I try to keep yeah. things really simple, but if you take it from the center, the center piece of you and then how it lived out, I think then you have a better chance of being consistent in what people see, hear, and feel. Uh, yeah, I, so I love that. I, I mean, I think it's really great. I do think, and you, and you said something before about when if you uncover something and and the uh oh, and so it really takes someone who is willing to be vulnerable in that space, mm -hmm. who really wants to see where it's working and and where it isn't working, and can be honest and and as you said, realize that's an opportunity. Right. It so is. talk some more about this opportunity, because I think I want people to really hear that it doesn't have to be an awful thing. No, no. You know, so so I, I, I would start that thought off with uh, one, one of my favorite quotes happens to be by Confucius. All right. You ready for this one? Sure. I and, am. And it's basically the quote is there are three things you can't hide from the moon, the sun and the truth. I love that. At some point, Diane, the truth is going to come out. So I'm, I'm speaking now from a place of somebody saying, yeah, you know, I just uncovered something. It's kind of nasty. It's kind of gnarly. Um, no one's really going to know about this. So let's just kind of hope it goes away. All right. It, it's not going to matter. Well, look, I think we've seen enough of the examples in the news. <laughs> you, you even pointed one out, you know, with that member association. It's going to come out. The truth will will come out. Um, so here's an opportunity to, to live into another word that I think is really important and there's actually strength in it. Uh, it's called vulnerability. Yeah. And a lot of leaders, owners, people who are in positions of making things happen, don't like that word because it could signal weakness. I believe there's a lot of strength in, in, in that word vulnerability. So where can you find opportunity and risk or opportunity in places where there have been mistakes. Looking at, I'll give you an example, right? Uh, back in 2007, eight, nine, if you worked in the home mortgage business, <laughs> right? You didn't necessarily have to work for countrywide mortgage to have stink on you because you work right. in that, right? So I'm going to give you an example of where I, I, I take, some uh, business owners through an exercise where I, I asked them to look at, at their, the risk within their industries. What are people saying about your industry? Let's take a look at that larger picture. And if you can list three, four, five, six things out there aren't positive. Maybe it's, you know, maybe it's customer service. Maybe it's time to market. Maybe it's, you know, um, you know, product innovation. Okay, great. Now we know what people are frustrated with. How do we take the risk of association of those key points and build them into new business opportunities. How do we improve customer service? How do we set the industry standard now? How do we yeah. take this and create, I call it sort of like our Tylenol moment. Remember back in the eighties when yeah. people were unfortunately died from the cyanide poisoning, right? People, yeah. but that was going to be the end of Johnson and Johnson and Tylenol. Uh, but instead, they, in amazing time, turned this around and created an industry standard of tamper-resistant packaging and bottling. 
something we've never seen before, but now it's wow. the And through that, they not only recovered, so they lost a, a mil, hundreds of millions of dollars um, in that situation, but they regained the market share and again became the industry leader. So where is your Tylenol moment as a, as a company looking at your industry? And be proactive in owning it, or maybe not even, maybe it's not yours to own, but recognizing there's an issue. You don't necessarily have to have the issue to suddenly now build out a program or a system or a strategy that addresses it, that can make you different, make you stronger, more differentiated. I, so, that is terrific. I'm, I'm, I'm going to hop off that little soapbox. I could go, <laughs> I can go on. Oh, and on. no, no. I, but, but this is exactly because I got to tell you something. You're talking about that and I'm thinking about Wells Fargo mm -hmm. and I'm thinking, okay, so they have this massively horrible value statement that, that they are living with, you know, which is cheating and, and screwing with their customers. And what happens is a whole bunch of employees lose their jobs. The big guys either don't lose their job or get huge payoff for, for they should be in jail. It, now I'm on my soapbox, but then <laughs> Instead of looking at it and going, okay, we better take a look at our entire house and make sure we don't have any other mold growing, they don't. They just try and say they're sorry and move on from there. And then all of a sudden, a couple of years later, they, they have another problem because their value system was flawed, totally and completely flawed. And they didn't look at it and say, we have to fix this. Mm -hmm. everywhere. We have to do what you said. We have to look at what is the experience of this? Are we living this thing? Yep. And now they're trying to make up for it, which I'm not convinced they're going to be able to do. Well, it, it's, it's, uh, they, they may. And I think over time they can, if, so like, here's, here's the difference. If they were to come out and say, this, these are the four areas, and I'm making it up four areas. These are, the, these are the four areas where we fail internally. As a result, here are the specific points and the, the areas that we're going to now you know, integrate new systems, new checkpoints, new backups, whatever it might be. The people who are responsible for that are no longer a part of the organization, and you're right, it, 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 it smells bad when they're paid off out the, out the back door. Um, but it takes time and consistency. Like it's one thing, I mean, you hear the, the radio uh, commercials, especially here in Charlotte, uh, where it's about, you know, we're, we're starting over, you know, we're-, we're Yeah, we're yeah. Across. That's a great start. Yeah. I'd like to see more in the space of, and here's what we're doing. Oh, and by the way, here's an update on how that's going. Like keep that conversation current on your social okay. media channels, on your website, create a checklist for crying out loud. You know, um, th there was, there was um, a good example of this with Baylor University when, when they had their Title IX uh, sexual harassment uh, in, uh, uh, lawsuit a few years back where they had um, more than, I wanna say it was like 90 different cases that were going on and issues. They had an independent group come in and do a study to see where the breakdown occurred and they then put on their website a, an update on here's where the problem was, here's what our remedy is, and here where we, here's where we stand right now. Very transparent. Yeah. Transparent. And, and again, that's where you're going to gain people's trust back again. Being transparent, time, and consistency. No other way. Right. No, right. No other way. Can't do right. it. And, and, you know, for a company like Wells, they can weather that storm financially. I, I don't know uh, how that works on Main Street for a lot of these small companies, especially when, you know, um, within a year of a negative reputation crisis coming in, coming to light, most companies lose about a third of their revenue. Wow. Yeah, either directly or indirectly, directly through customers leaving and going elsewhere, or indirectly because of reviews or comments or um, you know other information where people won't even step foot in your door or click on, on your website. So the impact is real. The impact it is, is real. So, I, you know, again, I appreciate the opportunity to, to speak with you and your audience to, you know, perhaps shift their mindset around how they're managing one of their greatest assets. Yeah, I, I uh, and I am so glad to have you here for this because, mm -hmm. um, 
I agree with you. I, I think, you know, these, these companies that have deep pockets, they can, they're either in an industry that there isn't a ton of competition or they, um, they, they can just wait it out. You know, they, they can help people forget about it, whatever it is. But on Main Street, you know, small businesses, it is harder to overcome something that is really damaging to your reputation. I, I've seen it here. I'm in the Cleveland area, and, and there was a woman who said something on social media that she should not have said, and and then her response to it was not great, mm-hmm. and she's gone. She's yeah. she's just no longer. I mean, you just you cannot. If you think about it, this is this is really and and you said this before. This is people interacting with people, and humans are forgiving when they believe that you are sincere. Absolutely. And right, and so it really is about first setting your company up for success as much as possible by being willing to look at all of the corners and all of the. You know, monsters live in the dark, so shining a light on everything that you've got going on and setting um, a, a culture in place that is really in keeping with your values and then being prepared for something that could come out of the blue or for something going on in your industry that you that is not your company, but as you said, your guilt by association. Right, right. You know, Diane, what I love, I just heard you say one of the little nuggets in there, and it's so important, especially in crisis management today, is own it. If yeah. something went down, own it. Like you said, people will forgive you if you're sincere and honest and recognize what happened. You know, there was, a, there was an age when the, the idea of deny, 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 remember? I mean, there was a time when that, that, that worked. Yeah. Yeah. No longer. No longer. With social right. media today, like I said, I mean, the, the truth is going to come out. So own it. And people will absolutely, absolutely respect that. More importantly, because we see it not that often these days. It, it's so far in between. I mean, think of, think of I mean, uh, it's an older example, but, you know, Lance Armstrong. Oh, yeah. And the impact that had not only on him as an athlete and, and the brand himself, uh, there's a great quote that he had because within, I think, like 72 hours of the Oprah Winfrey show where he came clean and said, yes, I was doping. Yes, I was lying. Uh, all those things. All of his corporate sponsors left him. And his quote was, that was a $75 million day. Yeah. Okay. Now, I'm not shedding any tears for Lance at all. But what really upsets me about that example and why I bring it up, and this kind of gets back to the, the impact the, on the individual is that he was the face of this amazing organization. Yeah. Him, the Yellow Bands, the Livestrong Foundation, yeah. right? He was an inspiration, yeah. a beacon of hope for people who needed inspiration and hope in the face of a life-ending disease. Right. And what happened? What do you do to those people? Absolutely right. let down. Absolutely yeah. let down for the years of lying. And as a result, that organization lost millions of dollars annually annually and their funding and their support in an area where it was desperately needed right so i'm I, now you know how, could he play that differently absolutely should he have yes absolutely. but we're you know we have the luxury right now of monday morning quarterbacking that whole scenario right, right? but this is where it gets back to, i'm going to circle back around to values where was lance's mm-hmm. values during all that would it be value more the titles or his position within the cancer community, right? Yes. Right? Yes. So I, I would just also <sighs> encourage your listeners to think about what they stand for as yeah. not only owners, but in their communities, in their business communities, in their industries, because the actions and the words, the things we say, the things we do go beyond just our personal selves it will impact your business it will impact your industry right so i'm not trying to you know sometimes folks think oh my gosh that's so aspirational that's so i i 
can't get my head around that sometimes of having to live that out. But if you sit down and really ground yourself, yeah, take small steps, you can do it. I see plenty of good examples out there. You know? There's plenty. And I love that example. And, and I keep thinking about, you have to make the decision, what legacy do you want to live, leave? Oh, yeah. yes. Right? Yes, yes. Because look at, he had a legacy mm-hmm. with Live Strong and it was great. And now it is something different. Yeah. And, and so we really do and, and realize that we are responsible for that. And we get to make the decisions about how people are going to remember us, right. which then translates to how they're going to remember our company, our product, our employees, our whatever, you know, fill in the blank. They're all connected to each other. It's such a great, that was a great example yeah. well, of the uh, impact. You know, it, it's one that, that often jumps out to me because of the impact it has beyond the individual, you know. Right. Often, you know, I, I'm just, I'm a big believer that your reputation speaks for you when you aren't there to speak for yourself. Yeah. So yeah. what is it saying? Do you know what it's saying? That, that's the other part of it. Sometimes leaders don't know what their reputation no. yeah. or, or, or they, they think they know, or, you know, there's an old saying, you start believing your own PR, you know, you, you, <laughs> you got to be careful and really think about, so what, what, what is it? What do people see? How can I get better? Where, where are those blind spots? You know, again, we're all human. Yeah. yeah. We're all human. Well, my gosh. So I, I have so enjoyed this conversation wow. and I, I really tell the listeners how they can get their book and how they can get your book, because I think they all need it and how they can find you and, and all that great stuff, please. Awesome. So uh, first of all, thank you for having me on. This has been a great conversation. I've truly, truly enjoyed it. Uh, so you can get my book at my website, which is mikemooney.com, M-O-O-N-E-Y. You can get it on Amazon uh, as well. Uh, and you can find me on LinkedIn. You can email me at mike at mikemooney.com. I love uh, emailing and connecting with people there as well. And uh, I'm on social media. So uh, please, I'd love to connect. Terrific. Oh, gosh, thank you. And, and listeners, you know I'm thanking you, but I'm also going to say let's all – make a commitment to ourselves in this month of gratitude that we are going to really take a look at this and take a look at our own businesses and our lives and how we're motoring in the world and make sure that we are leaving the reputation that we want to be leaving. Uh, And I also want to thank our sponsor who I'm pretty sure has a pretty good reputation out there. And that's audible.com. If you would like to get a free trial and a free audio book, Go to audibletrial.com slash business growth uh, to sign up for that trial. As always, continue to prosper and be curious. And until we meet again on another episode of Accelerate Your Business Growth, goodbye and good day. The Jim Stroud Podcast explores the discoveries and trends forming the future of our lives. Brain-to-brain communication, robot bosses, microchip implants for workers, and artificial intelligence replacing human workers are all happening now. If you want to know what's happening next, subscribe now to the Jim Stroud Podcast.